Welcome, dear gourmets! Today we'll show you 10 strange foods, dishes and snacks you can find on menus all around the world. Well, some of them may be a tad bit or entirely disturbing, but still, it's the food you can officially order. Hungry enough? Enjoy! Ten bird's nest soup. Bird's nest soup is a delicacy in Chinese cuisine. It's made by dissolving bird's nest in water. Edible bird's nests are made by edible nest swiftlets. Males of those birds build nests using their saliva during mating season. The production takes up to 35 days. Those birds nest in caves, and since this product is very expensive. Special concrete buildings are purposefully built to farm them. Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand are the largest bird's nest producers. Because of the health benefits promoted by its traditional medicine, the dish is valued especially in China, with its 90% of the world's consumption and import, mainly Hong Kong. But the USA is the second largest importer of this product. The typical color of the bird's nest is white. But red version, so-called blood nest, although very rare, also exists. Edible bird's nest is one of the most expensive animal culinary products. One kilogram, which is 35 ounces, of white nest cost about $2,000 and for red nest the price is up to $10,000. In Hong Kong, be prepared to spend even $100 for a bowl of bird's nest soup, although you can find a place to pay half that price. Some say bird's nest has not much taste or it's a little similar to the egg white. The enjoyable thing in bird's nest soup is its gelatinous texture. Red version is, as I said, a lot pricier because it's very rare and contains minerals making white nest red. It's not the bird making the color, it's the region it lives in. It's actually bird's guano dropping that dyes nest red. But be careful with the red nest. It absorbs the chemicals which are proved to be carcinogenic. And since red version of the nest is so expensive, it is often counterfeited by treating the white nests with red pigment. 9. Balut Oh, nothing special, just a package of regular eggs from Canadian supermarket. No, you'd freak out at home when trying to add them to your cake. Those actually are two or three week old incubated mallard duck eggs with a very noticeable duckling inside. After boiling, you crack the egg's shell, slurp the liquids and then chew it. Duck's embryo is visible but not fully developed, so its tiny bones are soft and don't break into sharp shards the bird's bones are famous for. The taste is quite similar to chicken soup. This is very popular and cheap street food in Asia, especially Philippines, where balut is a national food. The production of balut requires fertilized eggs and warmth, usually sun or warm sand. After the mentioned two or three weeks, duck embryo forms and voila, ready to eat. If you keep the eggs shorter and embryo doesn't develop, you'd get penoy, another duckling dish, but it tastes more like a regular hard-boiled egg. You can buy balut in shops and food stands in the whole Asia. It's even served as an appetizer in some restaurants. It may also be found in Filipino stores in North America. Fun fact is, in Australia, Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals urges people not to boil balut eggs older than 18 days because the embryo inside may be developed enough to feel the pain. 8. Escamoles also known as insect caviar or Mexican caviar, and that already tells you where to look for this dish. Mexican caviar consists of larvae and poopy of ants that live in the agave plants, from which their eggs are harvested. Escamoles are often pan-fried on butter with spices and served in various forms, from being an ingredient in tacos and omelettes to being served alone with a side of guacamole. They have a consistency similar to cottage cheese and a nutty flavor. Well, they even resemble pine nuts. Escamoles have a long tradition and were known even to Aztecs. 
The name caviar is quite accurate because one kilogram, which is 35 ounces of escamoles, may cost up to even a hundred of US dollars. It's due to the fact that the mentioned ants live only in the high plains of central Mexico, and one nest produces eggs no more than four times, only between February and April, so harvest time is quite short. 7. Wasp Crackers Jivachi Senbei, or something like that. This quite new Japanese snack was invented by some older Japanese people in the city of Omachi. It all began about 2012, when senior members of a Japanese digger wasp lover club, majority of whom are in their 80s, together with the local biscuit maker, prepared this curious snack. They delivered the digger wasps, which were later boiled, dried and added to the rice cracker mix, which was stamped in a hot iron cracker cutter. They gained popularity as wasp crackers and started to be sold in local markets and some stores. The taste of the rice cracker is obvious, but wasps there. Tastes like burned raisins with sour and bitter flavor, with palpable leg or wing, and as far as I know, no one ever complained about the sting. Exactly! A sting! 6. Haukar, a fermented Greenland shark. A rotten shark fermented in its own urine! Have you ever thought about eating a creature whose average life expectancy is about 300 years and which reaches maturity at 150? You can have a taste of ancient times on Iceland. And the taste is awful. Many find it as the most disgusting thing they have ever eaten, with the terrible smell of urine. But perhaps the most accurate description was given by the English poet W. H. Auden, according to whom this half-dry and half-rotten shark is uh, as tough as an old boot and tastes very much like boot polish, and because of the smell it should be eaten outside. That must be due to high ammonia and urea amounts in fermenting shark meat. The thing with Greenland and other slipper shark is, you cannot eat them fresh. Their meat contains toxic amounts of urea and trimethylamine oxide. First Vikings who ate it fresh reported to feel inebriated like, but some of them never sobered and died. The preparation of this dish consists of a few stages. First is putting a gutted shark into a container with drain holes or, more traditionally, burying a shark in the ground with mass of stones on top which make the build-up pressure squeeze fluids out of a shark's body and at the same time letting it ferment in this manner for 6 to 12 weeks depending on the season. Second stage is digging the shark up, cutting it into strips and hanging it to dry for another few months. Then go ahead, wake up the viking inside you! Haukar is often served in cubes and is available in two forms depending on the shark's body part it comes from. It's either soft and white or chewy and reddish. It's nearly always served with a shot of spirit, usually aquavit, as if they knew that sober person cannot hold it in the stomach. If you are brave enough, you can get it in the local shops. However, it's mostly served during the Icelandic Midwinter Festival. 5. Corn Smut Whitlacoche, or maize fungus, yep, it's this fungus growing on corn that you can order while visiting Mexico. Ustilago maidis fungus is considered there a delicacy. Infected by the disease, corn kernels swell up and their color becomes bluish. When corn smut is cooked, its bluish color turns black. It can be consumed fresh or cooked. It's added to omelets, quesadillas or soups. The corn smut has to be harvested while immature before it gets dry. The flavor of cooked smut is sweet, savory, earthy and mushroom-like. Some food articles even go one step further and call it Mexican truffle. It's been known in Mexico since the time of Aztecs and is considered tasty and healthy. Huitlacoche contains great amounts of the important amino acid lysine, which appears only in low quantity in regular corn. The same is with protein, which corn smut contains much more than not infected corn. Apart from that, corn smut also helps to lower the levels of cholesterol. Interesting is that corn infected with this fungus is more expensive than the healthy one. 
That leads to intentional infecting of the crops. America and Europe are not enthusiastic about introducing this fungus as farmers generally consider corn smut as blight. Nevertheless, the USA tried the intentional introduction of this Mexican truffle in 1990s. 4. Kazumartu, which means rotten cheese, but it's better known as maggot cheese. Maggots. 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 This is European delicacy from Sardinia and Corsica, and it's basically sheep milk cheese pecorino led to be infested with cheese flies larvae, which feast on the cheese. Their digestive enzymes break down cheese's fat, which causes the cheese to have soft, creamy texture. When it is fermented enough, the cheese is ready to be eaten. It's often spread on flat bread and accompanied by red wine. The taste of Casumarzu is a bit spicy. It's a little similar to Gorgonzola, but much stronger. The only thing stopping people from eating it are, of course, wiggly larvae that can jump up to 15 centimeters, which is 6 inches into the air. Sometimes people who wish not to eat live maggots seal a piece of Casumarzu in a paper bag and wait until worms suffocate. It's easy to know when they do, the noise of worms hitting the paper stops. However, if the worms on fresh Casumarzu died and humans didn't help them to die, it is considered unsafe to consume. But is it really safe to eat cheese with still alive maggots? Opinions are divided. Some scientists claim it may cause pseudomyasis, what means that ingested larvae survived in your stomach and now eat your intestines. By the way, if you want to know more about worms, larvae and other nasty human parasites, click here. 3. Shirako Japanese runny cream cheese, and that actually has nothing to do with cheese. Shirako means white children, and those are fish sperm sacs or milk, mainly from cod, anglerfish or salmon. This paste, which looks like mayonnaise, has a taste of buttery, slightly fishy cream cheese with salt and is best served fresh. It can be either raw or slightly fried and put on top of rice, but it can also be fried in tempura butter or mixed with egg custard. Shirako is often spiced with ponzu sauce. It's mostly a seasonal winter dish. 2. Fruit bat soup Unfortunately, it's true. Small fruit bats served in the form of a soup are delicacy in Palau, Guam and some parts of Africa. Like the name says, fruit bats eat fruit and nectar, therefore their meat is pretty sweet. However, perhaps not many people know that bats also eat plant seeds that contain neurotoxins affecting human brain. These toxins may accumulate in bats' meat. Not warned enough? Before you order the soup, which is said to taste like strangely sweet chicken broth, you should know that. Bats, despite being washed, are typically boiled with fur, with coconut milk, spices, ginger and sometimes vegetables. After that, the bat is served in a large bowl from which it's looking at you, and it looks more like a tiny dog than a bat. Many customers want the bat to be skinned, but the traditional, proper way to eat a bat is to chew it well and long enough to be able to suck all the fruity sweet meat from it, leaving the fur. 1. Sour Toe Cocktail And here we get to the number one on our list, if not number one on everyone's list. What you see is an actual, preserved in salt, mummified human toe. Drunk in a shot of whiskey or any other 40% strong, which is 80 proof spirit of your choice, this cannibal-ish drink can only be ordered in one place on earth, in Canadian Dawson City, Yukon Territory. How did it start? The legend says that in 1920s a local miner and smuggler got a frostbite on his toe. That had to be amputated and it was further kept by him in a jar of alcohol for sentimental reasons in his cabin. Fifty years later, in 1973, a local fellow by the name of Captain Dick Stevenson discovered the mansion smuggler's cabin with a toe still in a jar. 
He took the tow with him and came up with an idea to add this unique ingredient to the drinks of those who didn't feel to try it in the Sourdough Saloon, as the Sour Tow Cocktail. And this is also when the Sour Tow Cocktail Club was formed. Less than a decade later, in 1980, a miner trying to beat the 13th round of Sour Tow shots fell to the ground swallowing the original, many decade old tow. So, where do they get those toes? Are they gonna you want get a toe? I can get you a toe. Believe me. Well, via worldwide donations, they have toes lost to famous Yukon winters, but also diabetes or even lawn mower accidents. One of the most famous and recent cases is that of Nick Griffiths, a former British Marine who lost a few toes to frostbite while training for the Yukon Arctic Ultra Marathon. His toes were amputated in England and later their owner just mailed them to Canada for use in the cocktail. The rule of sour toe is, you can drink it fast, you can drink it slow, but your lips must touch the toe. To get a certificate confirming your alcoholic cannibal endeavor, your lips have to touch the mummified toe in the presence of a bar official. About 100,000 people have tried and drunk properly the sour toe cocktail so far. But bear in mind that you can neither swallow nor keep the toe as a souvenir, otherwise you'll be severely fined. Fines rose in 2013 from 380 to nearly 2000 US, not Canadian dollars, after one client consumed the treasure toe on purpose. There were also cases when a toe was stolen. It seems that drinking sour toe cocktail is the only attraction bringing people to Dawson City. Yep, it's a casual conversation topic like Have you seen the Eiffel Tower or kept that toe in your mouth? In order to make an amputated toe cocktail friendly, it needs to be preserved in a strong, high-grade alcohol and later it must be stored on rock salt for a few months where it mummifies. Then a new life for a toe begins, but it should only be drunk with strong spirits. The big toe is surely the moneymaker. Sadly, the inventor of this drink, Dick Stevenson, passed away in 2019, of course leaving his toes for further consumption. As you see, this toe-shaped urn was prepared for his ashes. Would you try sour toe cocktail? Or will you rather stay with your toe-killa or mojito? A toast to your health, dear viewers. There you have it, 10 bizarre foods you can order. Hungry for more? Stay tuned, another portion of Strange Foods is coming soon.